Hi, welcome to Unique Parenting. I am B. Moist, and today I want to talk to you guys about traveling with kids and some, I guess, proactive measures you could do to make traveling more enjoyable. And, you know, it's also, if you're traveling, maybe you're going on vacation or maybe you're seeing family, but definitely if you're going on vacation, it's your vacation too. So you have to also enjoy it. Um, and we want to make sure we make it the best in order for you to enjoy the traveling experience. So the number one rule that I have is preparation. You have to be ready. Like sometimes I recognize that the more prepared I am when I'm traveling, the easier the trip is and the easier the transition is for my kids. Our thing that we like to do, we bring comfort items, which I also recommend to families that I speak to. Bring something that is from the home that is of comfort, especially with young kids. Um, when they're really little, you want to bring all the things and kind of you need to bring all the things, but that's also like a first time parent rookie mistake. <laughs> um, then you learn you don't need all the things, just some of the things. But the number one thing you need is probably a comfort item. Um, and it's usually some form of lovey or a blanket of some sort. My kids still bring comfort items to trips with them when they travel. Um, they're blankets um, and they're usually, they're team blankets. I won't say which one, um, but if you follow me, you know exactly what team I'm talking about. Um, but they usually bring some kind of a team um, blanket or an, an item. My, that my daughter also loves like the stuffed animals and things like that from a previous travel experience. And it seems to just make the transition into the hotel room easier, especially with sleep and making things kind of more calm. I also tend to make sure that I have some kind of a sound um, for the hotel room where I kind of play campfire sound, which is the preference of my son, and I play thunderstorm, which is the preference of my daughter, and I combine, I, I create a blend. <laughs> I create a sleeping blend and they just, gosh, they, they love it. And they just go straight to sleep. And that's when we're traveling and transitions used to be hard for us. But once I kind of learned the rhythm, it works better. So if you're traveling with younger kids, transition items and items of comfort that can definitely make the hotel space or the Airbnb, wherever you're staying, a lot more comfortable. Now, if you're traveling with older kids, it's going to be a little bit different. And older children tend to want to be on screens. You can still do that, but still manage it pretty well by having increments of time. We tend to break it down into screen, downtime, 20 minutes, screen, downtime, 20 minutes, and followed by an activity that you're like listening to something where it's music or <clears throat> or a podcast because we love podcasts here. Um, so we kind of break down the time where, you know, it's an hour screen, 20 minutes downtime, another hour screen, 20 minutes downtime, an hour of some podcasts, 20 minutes downtime, another hour of listening to music or something like that, where, I mean, we basically got four hours, which covers a lot of traveling, depending on where you're going, especially if it's a plane ride. So there are ways that you could go around it because you, you want to limit the exposures to screen um, while traveling simply because it's going to make your child tired and exhausted. And if they're on screens all day, they're not going to really be pleasant. And again, it's your vacation too. So I want you to be able to enjoy it as well. So these are my recommendations for traveling. Um, hopefully they're effective and they work for your families, but just kind of figure out what will work, especially with older kids. You can always talk to them, but limitations on traveling with screens is a really big one. It's really important that um, kids are present and in the moment and they're building those memories that's going to, you know, those serotonin induced memories don't will not get built if they're on screens. <laughs> um, but if they're present and they're involved and they're engaged, it will definitely be impactful. So in the meantime, I want you all to enjoy your unique parenting journey with your unique child.